I'm wiggling it around. I'm so, hey, hey, finally here. My phone was just playing silly buggers there. I hope you are really well. Welcome to my Thursday live today. Great one today. And I'm all excited, all excited because I've been running my live NLP training for the last three days and I absolutely love, absolutely love running it. Um, it's, I, I kind of, for me, I'm absolutely in my element when I'm running the live events. Uh, I've actually got Master Practitioner coming up as well in the next couple of, um, well, we start online at the weekend and then the following week we've got it live again. So we've got that and I've got my brilliant one day women's live business business event coming up in November too. So it's chocker chocker blocker um, November. So if you are here live today, do pop me a hey in the comments. If you're catching up on replay, which I know a lot of you do, do also let me know that you're here and, and that you you just do a hashtag replay. So today is all about um, the steps to success. Um, because if you, I don't know about you, uh, and I've got a couple of examples today that have come up recently. So if you've got that niggly, nagging feeling that you are, you know, you're not doing actually what you want to be doing. And then all, all of a sudden you're suddenly thinking, I'm not actually sure what I want anyway, maybe. Or you are finding yourself making some excuses of why you can't do something. Um, if you will, are here live, do drop a hey in the comments and then we can kind of have a chat as well as we go through this. Um, so I, like, as I said, I've been running my live um, training. Hey, is that Karina? Hey, Karina, lovely to see you. Oh, is it Katrina? Sorry, I can't see. Katrina or Karina? I can't actually see the, <laughs> the comments on there. Um, so I've been running my live um NLP training and it brings a lot of stuff up it brings a lot of stuff up when we do the NLP training and those that actually come on that training experience huge absolutely huge uh, transformations but the lead up to it can really fill them with anxiety and dread uh, feelings of not being good enough um, of worry a couple of them have also mentioned how they haven't slept and they've had weird dreams and actually one of my ladies that's coming on my master practitioner kind of said oh now she suddenly started feeling it you know leading up to it when when she saw my my kind of post about it now all of that is stuff is really normal and i see it so often because stepping out of our comfort zone is really scary isn't it it's really really scary but this is where we grow this is where we grow. No one likes this kind of the uncomfortableness, if, if that's actually a word. I don't even know if that's a word. Now, I speak to lots and lots of people who have reasons for not doing something. And they tell me all the reasons why they can't do something. And two of my ladies, actually, this is the example. So two of my ladies on my master practitioner program, um, they were really challenged before they committed. And when I say challenged, what I mean by that is they really, they kept saying to me, I really want to do it. I really, really want to do it. But their deeper unconscious part of them, you know, the, the bit that self-sabotages our success kicked in. It kicks in and they suddenly got scared. And suddenly they started saying things to me like, I'd really love to do it, but... I really haven't got the time. I don't think this time of year is the right time for me. Um, I've got loads of other stuff going on. Um, I haven't got the money to hand and I haven't got childcare as examples of the things that they were using. But you, let me know and, and let me know if any of those are things that you've heard yourself saying. Because guess what happens when we excuse ourselves like that? We let the fear bit, the comfort zone bit, pull us back in and we give our power over we give our power over to them and that's when we just don't move forward by you know with anything you know with what we want to do then when that comes up now it's really natural to feel scared it's really natural it's part of our you know natural reactions but we can't let it control us so we can't actually let it stop us doing the thing that we really want to do so I could almost hear this desperation when I was speaking to them on the phone. You know, they've done practitioner and, you know, they wanted to do master practitioner, but they kept saying these things. And I could see the signs. I could see the signs. 
But what we don't want to do, oh yeah, Katrina, you can't, you you know that. So, um, what we can often do is actually let it really take over us, and we don't do the things we we really want to do. Now, the more that you push yourself, the more you step into that curiosity of learning and out of your comfort zone. Yay, Miranda! Yeah, you are. And Miranda, you're one of those, you know, that we I spoke to, and you were so scared, so scared, and all the stuff was coming up. But look how, you know, yeah, you you did the practitioner yesterday. We what a, what a few days we've had. So so glad that you did it. Hey, Sam, nice to see you. So the more you push yourself, the more you step into that curiosity of learning, and out of the, your comfort zone, the stronger you get. And the stronger you get, the more you will achieve. And then the more satisfaction you'll feel too. So the next time you hear yourself saying the reasons why you can't do something, delve a bit further. Delve a bit um, further into that. You know, do I really not have the time? Or have I not prioritised what I want? Have I not prioritised what, you know, me? Have I not put me ahead of anything? Um, can I really not, you know, is it possible that I can change things around? Have I not even thought about that? Um, or I, do I say, do I, you know, I haven't got the money. I haven't got, excuse me. I've just had a quick bite of food <laughs> before I come here. Um, so do I really not have the money is one of the other ones. Do I really not have the money to do that? Or is it that I'm not willing to find a way to make it work? And what the key here, what am I losing by not taking this action and investing? Um, I'm sure, Miranda, you'll say now that, you know, you would have really regretted it if you hadn't have done the practitioner programme. So the ladies that I was referring to on the master practitioner that, uh, you know, they committed and what they were doing, they caught themselves saying things like this. And you know what they did? They did everything that they needed to do to make it happen. They rearranged things. They took out payment options to suit them. They absolutely owned it because they wanted it. And they prioritised it above everything else. They could identify that it was just those fear feelings coming up. And they did everything, almost ma moved mountains to make it happen. Um, so for you, I just want you to just ask yourself. So instead of looking for all the reasons and excuses of why you can't do something, which is your natural reaction, your natural reaction makes you do that. Look instead for the reasons to make it happen. The reasons that you really want to make it happen. And that's the challenge that I gave to my two ladies. I kind of said, right, you've given me all the reasons of why you can't do this. Now give me the reasons why you can and why you want to make it happen. And that really shifts your mindset there because it also makes you question do you really want it? Do you really want it? And if you don't, if you then, when you delve deeper, you think, do you know what? I actually don't want that. It's not important for me right now. Then that's great. You've got your answer that way. Yeah, own your sto story. Yeah, absolutely do that. So, you know, just challenge yourself on that because when you really want something, you'll do whatever it takes. And I want you to now think about, you know, whatever you, you're doing and whatever stage of life you're actually at, make you sure that you, you know, do you, ask yourself these questions. Do you want things to be better in your life? Is there anything that you don't want in your life? Is there anything more that you would like to have? Because sometimes we feel a bit guilty by then kind of going, I actually want more and, and admitting that. So is there anything that you are tolerating in your life right now? Is there anything else that you would like to do, but you're not allowing yourself to do it? What is it about your life that you'd like to change? So dare to step outside and ask yourself those questions. And then what you have to do, you then got to take some action towards moving towards that. Because otherwise you just float through life. You know, again, when I talk about, um, you know, we can often get distracted, can't, can't we, from our path and other people in our lives try and put us off and pull us back into the life that we used to live. And one of the things that comes up on the NLP course is it brings up tons of stuff. It does. And, and actually, people are a bit reluctant sometimes to do that. So it can bring up a lot of stuff. But if you want to be that best version of you, you've got to make a commitment to yourself that you're going to actually ask yourself those questions and then you're going to take those steps to move you in the direction that you want to go. 
and be prepared for those obstacles in your path. Because they're often there to actually help us grow into the person that we want to become. Because one thing that you will notice is that as you start showing your commitment to your new path, events and coincidences, they all start cropping up in your life. And suddenly you are inspired with lots of opportunities and possibilities. So it's almost as if your mind is conspiring to make your dreams come true, which is certainly what I believe is happening. Yay. Um, okay, so Sam, yeah, you do want to want more. You want to work less and you want to earn more. So what can you do about it? What can you do, Sam? And I know that we're obviously working together anyway. Hey, Donna, lovely to see you. So here's my super simple five steps to success. Um, the first one is to be really super clear on what the outcome is that you actually want. Now this one is normally the first stumbling block because not everybody knows what that, you know, what outcome it is that they want. But you have to know where you want to end up for you to even start because otherwise you're just drifting and you're floating. So even if it's a little bit vague to start off with, get something put in the ground, get that sort of stamp in the ground. You know, and if you really, really struggle to get your outcome, think of an outcome that you want, then decide what it is that you don't want first and flip that around. But you've got to know where you want to go. What's the end destination? Because by knowing your outcome from the outset, you'll know where you're aiming for. And actually, again, that can set up different parts of our brain that create opportunities for us. So just get something down that you want, you know what you're aiming for. And do it for everything. Everything you do has got to have a purpose for it. The next one, number two, is you've then got to do something. It's vital that you take action. A lot of people set that outcome and then they don't actually do anything about it. So this is about, you know, uh, well, an outcome without action is just a dream, isn't it? So you now need to take some action and it needs to be the action that's the right action. So inspired action. Otherwise, we just become busy fools or fools busy, however you want to say it, where you're just doing anything, but it's not actually taking you in the direction that you're going. And that's what, where the overwhelm stuff comes in, where we've just got so much on our plate, but actually we're not doing the things that are going to move the needle forward. So we need to be clear on the actions that we need to take that are going to actually take us to that next level. Um, number three is also being aware of what is happening and of your progress. Notice what results you're getting, what works for you and what doesn't work. Then so do more of the stuff that works and less of the stuff that's not working for you. Um, next one, number four kind of leads on from number three so instead of repeating those unsuccessful behaviors be bold and be courageous that if something if you're not on track something's got to change something's got to change so be flexible enough to and courageous enough to actually change that but be willing to do whatever it takes to achieve that success so have that you know real doggedness to actually go out and get whatever it is so like those ladies that the scare the the you know the scared sort of bit of their mind popped up they decided no I want this I'm going to do whatever it takes to do it and you need to do whatever it takes because people think that success goes in a lovely perfect straight line doesn't it but it doesn't it's a squiggly line so you may have to tweak things. Sometimes you may have to take a step back to go forward. But this is leading you to different opportunities and more choices. And then number five is quite simply to making sure that the thoughts that you're thinking and your kind of your physiology, your posture, everything you're, you know, you're saying, you're thinking, you're looking is all conducive to that end result that you want. So You've got to look, think and act the part. You know, you've got to do that because your mind and body are linked. That actually, if you are thinking, I can't really do that. I'm not going to be able to do this. Then guess what? You will actually, your posture, everything will show that. You've got to be really, you know, the language that you use, how you breathe, the thoughts that you're thinking, they all can contribute to the outcome. So make sure all of them are working together and you've got this mindset of excellence and positive thinking, you know, so making sure that you have got that mindset of positive thinking and making sure you're focusing on what you want, 
not what you don't want. Um, oh, I can't see that. I need to put my glasses on. <laughs> um, oh, so Sam, you've met with your upline leader for your uh, Neil's Yard and your events are booked and what you're doing up to February. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing, Sam. Brilliant. Um, and obviously we've got some stuff going on next week. So um, that will be moving you forward in your other direction in your counselling area too. Um, okay, so that's my five tips for success. Nice and simple, nice and easy. Go back to the little questions that I said at the beginning as well. Ask yourself those questions. Check on where you are giving excuses for not getting the results that you want. And how can you make it happen instead of coming up with the reasons why you can't? Now, let me know what your biggest ahas were. You know, I always love it when, you know, you pop your comments in and I can go back and, you know, and, and find out what your biggest ahas were. What was the biggest thing today that really made you think? And then you think, oh, actually, I'm going to do that. And, and so let me know what that is. And November's a really busy, exciting month, actually, because obviously we're coming to the end of the year. And if you'd really like to finish off 2021 with a bang and begin 2022 with a plan to make the changes you really want to do, then I've got just one space, just one space. It's an unexpected space that's come up on my one day women's business event. It's on 20th of November. It's a live event. So it's in Solihull. It's got lunch provided. There's a photographer. Um, this is a fab opportunity to network with lovely women, wonderful like-minded women there. And we're also going to be delving really deep into the stuff that's been holding you back. We'll do some clearing stuff. Um, we've got lots, I've got so much planned. And, um, you know, it will take you into 2022 as well. Lots of networking opportunities too. And it's just, it's priced at just £97 plus VAT. So do message me if you want to snap that place up before it goes. Just just DM me. You don't have to, you know, put anything in there. It's a, just a DM because it's a personal invite. Um, so just do that. And that is it for today for me. So, um, you know, let me know how you've got on and I will see you again next week. Have a wonderful week, lovelies. See you later. Bye.